Hello, thank you for joining me here at Why the Book Wins, where I compare books with their movie adaptations. My name is Laura, and today I am talking about The Talent of Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith, published in 1955, and I'm comparing it with the movie The Talent of Mr. Ripley, directed by Anthony Minghella. I think that's how you say his last name. And this was released in 1999. And this is the second movie by this director I have covered because last year I did Cold Mountain, a Cold Mountain book versus movie, and that movie also stars Jude Law and has Philip Seymour Hoffman, same as Mr. Ripley. And then if you're a fan of Patricia Highsmith, this is my third Highsmith novel I have covered. Last year I did Deep Water, which I actually loved. I love that book. That's my favorite Highsmith novel I have read so far, and I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, and then I have also done Carol, which is very different. Carol is a romance and is very different from both Deep Water and Mr. Ripley. But yeah, I really loved Carol as well. The movie has Kate Blanchett, which Kate Blanchett is also in Mr. Ripley too, but she's of course an amazing actress, and so it's always a pleasure to cover anything she is in. And I wanted to give a shout out to Olivia who emailed me requesting this book and movie. And it worked out well because coincidentally, when she emailed me requesting this, I was already reading the book. So the timing was perfect. But still, even though I was already covering it, I really appreciate it when people email me and reach out and have requests and recommendations. Sometimes it can take me a while to get around to them. It worked out well in Olivia's case since I was already reading it. But yeah, so thank you to all those who reach out to me. And again, those who subscribe, those who come on the videos, it means so much if you follow me on Instagram. Really appreciate the support. And yeah, Olivia, I hope you enjoy my book versus movie episode for this. But on to the book review. So yeah, even though I this is my third Highsmith novel I have read, I definitely wouldn't say like she's a favorite author <laughs> of mine because even though like I enjoy her books well enough, I never feel like totally immersed in any of her books that I have read. Although, like I said, Deep Water was my favorite and that one I was the most invested in and the most interested in and I, it had more suspense too. Like Talented Mr. Ripley should have been more of a suspenseful book, but I never like was on the edge of my seat and I never felt that suspense that a book like this should have. I will say Tom Ripley is a fascinating character and so that definitely helps keep the story going, which Patricia Highsmith does write <laughs> just great characters and she herself, I think I talked about this in Deep Water, but she herself, I think some people said she was like, she had like a some type of personality disorder and so some of her characters will just be kind of odd as well and like Tom Ripley is and then Vic in Deep Water is kind of odd and then Strangers on a Train, which I started that book in 2020 and didn't finish it, <laughs> but that one too just has you know, characters that are just really interesting and not your normal type of person, I guess. But yeah, also in this book, it feels like Tom gets away with things too easily and like kept waiting for things to catch up and to get more interesting and suspenseful, but he just, things happen so easily for him, it seems. And so that was also just something I wasn't a fan of with this book. Onto the movie now. So I did watch this movie before. I saw it over 10 years ago. And the only thing I remembered really is when Matt Damon is Tom is telling Marge about how, uh, you know, like, Tom Ripley loves you, write it on a piece of paper, put it in your purse and save it for a rainy day. So I used to quote that line. <laughs> so that's the only part of this movie I remembered. But I like had totally not remembered how incredible this movie was. Like the performances are all spectacular and it is full of suspense, unlike the book. And then Tom also, I think he's even better in the movie because he's more sympathetic here as well. And I feel like in certain ways, the audience can relate more to Tom than they can to, you know, Dickie and Marge and the others. And even though like he still is a messed up person who does bad things, but yeah, you're still like wanting to see him get that happy ending, you know, at least I was. And at the 2000 Academy Awards, Jude Law was nominated for his performance as Dickie Greenleaf. And that was earned. I think Jude Law was amazing. Like I said, like everybody is incredible in this. But I was shocked to see that Matt Damon wasn't nominated because he was incredible in this movie. So how did he not get a nomination? That makes no sense. Did they think he got enough praise with Goodwill Hunting and didn't need another nomination or something? Because he should have gotten one. He was amazing as Tom Ripley. So yeah, I would highly recommend this movie. If you have an Amazon Prime membership, it is included in your membership. So it is definitely worth watching. I really, really loved this movie and I would highly, highly recommend it. Um, it can. I saw people on Letterboxd say how it's a mix of Call Me By Your Name and American Psycho. If that sounds like something you would be interested in, then you should definitely give this a watch. And from here on out, I will be getting into the details of the plot, so there will be spoilers for both the book and the movie. But in both, Mr. Greenleaf, who is Dickie's father, approaches Tom and asks Tom to go to Italy where Dickie is and to convince Dickie to come back home. And in the movie, he approaches Tom because Tom is wearing a Princeton jacket, which he had borrowed from someone else, but 
Mr. Greenleaf doesn't know that and he assumes Tom attended Princeton and he therefore thinks he must know Dickie who also went to Princeton. And even though Tom has no idea who Dickie is, he just goes along with the father's assumptions and agrees to go to Italy. Whereas in the book, Tom and Dickie actually had met, but they didn't know each other very well. And it was Someone told Mr. Greenleaf that Dickie knew Tom and that is why Mr. Greenleaf like goes out of his way to find Tom and ask him to go to Italy. And Tom of course agrees. And in the book we do learn more about Tom's background. For example, he was raised by his aunt who he doesn't like but he stays in contact because she sends him money. And while he is on the ship going to Europe, he writes her being like, you know, I'm going to Europe. I don't know what my address will be so you don't need to write me anymore. And since he's getting money from Mr. Greenleaf, he finally doesn't need to depend on his aunt for money. And so he just feels like a sense of relief at being able to cut ties with this woman that he doesn't like. And we also hear a story from when he was a kid. They were in like stop and go traffic and Tom had gotten out of the car for some reason. And when he's trying to come back in, each time he goes for the door handle, the aunt drives forward, making it so he can't get in the car. And this is so upsetting to Tom that he becomes like on the verge of tears. And when he does finally get it back in the car, there's someone else in the car and the aunt is like, oh, he's such a sissy, just like his father. And so you can just see that, you know, he was bullied by his aunt and and so you just kind of feel bad for him. But in both, Tom makes like he accidentally runs into Dickie and Marge while they are on the beach. And in the book, Dickie warms up to Tom, you know, not right away, but fairly soon, you know, as the days progress, Dickie warms up to him, whereas Marge like stays cool and distant throughout like the whole time. Whereas in the movie, Dickie does warm up to Tom and they become friends. And then Marge also likes Tom right from the start in the movie. And in the movie especially, like I said, I feel like the audience relates more to Tom because he's in this situation where he is surrounded by these people who are crazy rich and Tom is trying to fit in with them, but he can't because he's not from a rich family, right? Like he stands out by the way he dresses, like Freddie teases him because he wears corduroy in Italy, but he can't afford a new jacket. So he's stuck wearing this corduroy jacket uh, and he doesn't sail, he doesn't ski. And he also cares more about things like there's a scene where Freddie is in his apartment and just kind of you know doesn't have respect for the things in the house and Tom cares more about that right but Freddie as a rich person he's like you know like whatever if it breaks I buy a new one so he just doesn't have that respect that Tom does for things and also we see how like Dickie is talking about how he picked his place in Italy and he's like I just sailed out into the ocean and when I found something I wanted I got it and the way he says it you're just like oh my gosh like what a spoiled brat and in general yeah like Dicky just isn't very likable because he's just so pretentious and spoiled and same with Freddie too and then Meredith who we'll get into but Dickie and Freddie though especially are just so pretentious. But in the movie there is a woman Dickie is sleeping with, an Italian woman, and we see that early on she ends up committing suicide and Tom approaches Dickie being like, hey, I know you had known her and you were sleeping with her. And Dickie confides that she had actually been pregnant and she had approached Dickie wanting help, but he turned her away. And so Dickie is just very upset at how this all went about, about, about this whole thing. And that was not in the book at all. And in the movie, Marge and Dickie are romantically involved. However, like I just said, he was sleeping around. So it's not like he was being faithful to her. But prior to Dickie's death, the two of them had agreed to be married. Whereas in the book, Marge and Dickie were just platonic friends and there was like nothing more going on with them. However, it seems that Marge was in love with Dickie, but he, you know, wasn't reciprocating that love. And in the book, there's a scene in both book and movie when Dickie catches Tom dressed in Dickie's clothing and in the book when this happens Dickie gets upset and then he asks Tom if he is gay and Tom denies it but Dickie says that Marge had speculated that Tom was and so that is why Dickie is asking and then later on when Dickie is gone and it seems that he and Tom are just like you know living in Rome together Marge writes a letter to Dickie being like you know I wish you would have just told me that you and Tom are lovers like you didn't need to hide it from me and you don't need to be so secretive about it like you just could have come out and said it it's fine. Uh, but none of that is in the movie. I thought there would be a scene where Dickie confronts Tom about being gay, but instead of saying Marge speculated, I thought he was going to say like Freddie speculated because Freddie in the movie just seemed like that kind of a person who would speculate something like that. But yeah, it, that didn't happen at all in the movie. And in the movie, Dickie does almost seem bisexual or if, if he's not bisexual, he definitely seems to be stringing Tom along in a way so he can tell Tom is into him and he likes it. And you know, he's just kind of stringing him along, whether he's straight or gay, that seems to be what he is doing. But in the book, at some point, they leave the city where Marge is at and they go somewhere else. I forget the name. They're just kind of in different areas in Europe. Uh, but they rent a boat. And at this point in the book, Tom had been planning on killing Dickie and he's trying to think of like what way is the best way to do it. And he decides that when they're out on this boat, 
is when he should do it. And so while they're on this boat, he hits him with an oar until he dies. Whereas in the movie, it's more of a crime of passion because as they're out on this boat, Dickie tells him that he and Marge are going to be married and Tom gets upset about this. And then from there, Dickie is just very harsh being like, you're a leech, Tom, and you're boring. <laughs> and prior to this, he had also just been very condescending talking about how, you know, they were doing this ski trip but then they uninvite Tom because they're like, well, you can't ski, so you probably just shouldn't come anyway. And then Dickie is also saying how like Tom should just go home because his father has written Tom saying that, you know, clearly he has not succeeded in sending Dickie back home. And so he's gonna stop sending him money and Tom, you know, can go back home. And so Dickie is like, yeah, I mean, I guess you'll be going back, right? Cause you can't afford to be here without my father's money. And so just being very condescending towards Tom. And so this all kind of culminates, cumulates, cumulates? Uh, while they're on this boat and Dickie is just being very harsh and Tom comes at him being like hey at least I'm honest with who I am like you're denying the fact that you're into me and instead you're just like marrying Marge when clearly there's something more going on here you know and so they just have this tense moment back and forth which leads to Tom hitting Dickie with an oar and at first after he hits him he feels bad and is like oh my gosh I'm sorry but then Dickie attacks Tom and then from there Tom just hits Dickie multiple times with the oar until he dies. And then in the movie so when Tom first gets to Europe he meets this woman named Meredith and just for no particular reason he just tells her that his name is Dickie Greenleaf and that is not in the book. In the book he does not claim to be Dickie Greenleaf until after he has killed Dickie and then he takes on his identity. And so in both, he gets money by forging Dickie's signature. And he also wears these two rings that Dickie like never takes off. And he admired those rings. And so he starts wearing them. And he was already good at forging signatures and lying and impersonating people. And he straight up tells Dickie that he's good at all these things early on when they meet. And he also proves how good he is at impersonating people by impersonating Dickie's dad. This is in the movie. And it's a very eerie scene as he is impersonating Dickie's dad. But yeah, he's already good at all of these things. And so it is very easy for him to just slip into the identity of Dickie. And then in the movie, he runs into Meredith yet again while he's pretending to be Dickie and she thinks he is Dickie. And so the two of them start spending time together. But yeah, Meredith, her character is exclusive to the movie. She is not in the book at all. But then to talk about Freddy, so Tom meets Freddy because Freddy is friends with Dickie and like right from the start, Tom does not like Freddy. And in the movie especially, Freddy does not seem to like Tom either. And he is the one that was having that ski trip and Dickie was going to go and they uninvited Tom. But then Christmas comes and goes and Dickie doesn't show up to the ski trip because he is dead. <laughs> and so Freddy is able to find Dickie's address when Tom is pretending to be Dickie. So he shows up at Dickie's home and he sees Tom there. And he's like, hey, like the landlady said that Dickie was home. And Tom is like, oh no, like he went out to dinner. And Freddie just isn't buying it, but he ends up leaving. As he is leaving, he passes the landlady again and he tells her like, oh, Dickie wasn't home. And she's like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, he is. And so Freddie comes back upstairs because he's like, okay, something fishy is going on. Like what is, what is happening right now? Where is Dickie? And when he comes back in, Tom ends up hitting him in the head and killing him. And so Tom waits until dark. And then once it's dark, he takes Freddie in his car and he drives, you know, a ways away and he dumps Freddie's body. And in the book, he thinks it'll be a while till anyone finds Freddie. However, the next day in the newspaper, they say that they have found his body. And so Tom is questioned by the police. They think they're questioning Dickie, of course. And soon after all of this, Tom eventually goes back to being himself and he makes it seem like Dickie just kind of disappeared. But real quick, while he is still being Dickie in the movie, so like I said, he runs into Meredith, Meredith and the two of them spend time with each other and she is clearly very into him. And they end up going to the opera together and while they are there, they kind of separate during the intermission and Tom comes across Marge and her friend, Peter. And so they're like, oh, Tom, like you're here, like where's Dickie? And so he tells them like, oh, I can't talk right now, but let's meet at a cafe in the morning at 10 a.m. And then later on, he's with Meredith and he tells her like, I'm gonna meet you at this cafe at like 9.30. And so the next day he's watching from a distance at this cafe and he stands Meredith up. So she's just waiting there. And while she's waiting, Meredith and Peter show up and the two of them know each other, the three of them, because you know, they're all super rich Americans. And so they're like, oh, like, you know, you're from the rich textile family or whatever. And so she knows that Marge had been dating Dickie. And so she sees Marge and she's like, oh, like, yeah, I was with Dickie last night and you know, he's still in love with you, he told me, and you can plan on him returning to you soon. And then she ends up leaving, and after Meredith has gone, 
Tom shows up as Tom, acting like he doesn't know what just happened. And this was a genius move of Tom because Tom has been telling Marge like, oh, Dickie's around and she just keeps missing him. And obviously that starts to seem kind of fishy, right? But to have Meredith, this outsider, she claims to have seen Tom and to know what was happening. And so it just makes Marge believe Tom's lies all the more. But in the book, like I said, Marge started out like being kind of distant with Tom. And also she was just friends with Dickie. So she wasn't, I mean, she loved him but it was different in the movie because like they were engaged, right? So it was even weirder in the movie to be like, why would Dickie just disappear? Like we talked about getting married, but when Dickie disappears and then Freddie's death happens, Marge comes up to Rome and she spends time with Tom and Mr. Greenleaf also shows up. So the three of them are kind of, you know, together with the investigators trying to figure out what has happened to Dickie. And as time goes on, she just starts to trust him all the more. And even when she finds Dickie's rings, in Tom's like, you know, toiletry bag or whatever, she believes Tom's lie being like, oh, Dickie gave those to me and he was, you know, acting really weird about it. She believes him and is like, you know, Dickie would not have taken these off unless like he was gonna kill himself. And so she believes that is what has happened to Dickie. And by the end of the book, like they're on good terms and she doesn't suspect anything of Tom. Whereas this is the opposite in the movie. So like I said, Marge liked Tar Tom at the start of the movie, but as things go on, she begins to be suspicious of him. And when she finds Dickie's rings in the movie, she does not believe what Tom is saying and she is just scared of him. And at the end of the movie, Marge is leaving, but she lashes out at Tom being like, I don't believe you and she starts hitting him and Mr. Greenleaf has to like pull her off. So just very different from book to movie. And I preferred Marge in the movie because in the book, like she was just so gullible. Like everybody was so gullible and just believed what Tom was saying. Whereas in the movie, I liked that, you know, she had her instincts and she felt like, you know, this isn't what Tom Dickie would have done and something is off here and you're being weird and I don't trust you and you have done something to Dickie and you were involved in this, but no one believes her and they all just believe Tom instead. And so, yeah, I just like her much more in the movie. In the book, it was just too easy for Tom to just fool everybody, apparently. I mean, aside from Freddy, right? He was, he caught on in both book and movie, which is why Tom had to kill him. But in the movie, Tom writes up a letter using Dickie's typewriter. And in this letter, it's basically like a suicide note and combined this letter combined with the fact that Tom claims that Dickie gave him his rings, Mr. Greenleaf and the investigator believe like, okay, clearly Tom, Dickie has committed suicide. And based on how close Tom was to Dickie and how he talked about about Tom in that letter, Mr. Greenleaf just voluntarily is like, you know, clearly Tom liked you a lot. So I'm gonna give you like a large chunk of his inheritance. But, and also in the movie, we hear that in college, Dickie has like beat a man on the verge of death over a woman. So that since he has this violent streak in him, there it's very easy for them to believe that he must've killed Freddy. And then from there, just everything that happened just made him want to take his own life. Whereas in the book, so after the investigation, they think Dickie has either killed himself or he has just gone into hiding and doesn't want to be found. And so Mr. Greenleaf tells the investigator to call it off and you know, they're just ending things. And so Tom has gotten away with it, right? He killed these two men and he succeeded and he's in the clear. And then a few months pass and it's summertime and he claims that Dickie had given him a letter and on the envelope, Dickie said like, don't open till June. And so June comes around and Tom, you know, sees the letter for the first time. And the letter is a will where Tom, where Dickie leaves everything to Tom. And so he acts like he just opened this for the first time and he sends it to Mr. Greenleaf being like, hey, you know, Dickie had given this to me and I had forgotten about it, but I found it. And so I opened it and yeah, it turns out it's a will and he's leaving all his money to me. And when I read this in the book, I was like, wow, like you idiot, <laughs> you got away with these two murders and now you're gonna jeopardize everything by being super suspicious with this will. Like why would Dickie have left everything to you? Like that's so suspicious and weird and obvious. Like Mr. Greenleaf is not gonna buy that and he's gonna be like something weird is going on here. Uh, however, in the book, Tom says that he actually has gotten bored with how easy and smooth things have been going and he misses the excitement and the challenge. So he wants the money, so he, there is some greed there, but he also is just kind of like, yeah, and if it makes him suspicious, then I'm fine with that too, because you know, I want a challenge in my life. <laughs> so that's partly why he's sending the will is because he knows it's fishy and he wants to, you know, get that excitement back in his life. So I did think that was interesting. However, in the book, there is no challenge from this will and Mr. Greenleaf has no hesitation believing it and he agrees to just give Tom the money that Dickie has willed to him. So again, that part in the book, I was like, really? <laughs> like that was way too easy. Are you serious? He's just so quick to just believe these lies and yeah, anyway. So 
in book and movie, Tom receives a lot of Dickie's money. In the movie, at least he was a bit more subtle with the letter, right? But we of course need to talk about Peter. Uh, Peter Smith Kingsley, I believe is his full name. So in the book, Peter is a friend of Tom's that Tom meets. You know, he goes from being Tom to being Dickie to being Tom again. So when he is Tom yet again, he meets this guy named Peter and they become friends. And then when Marge comes to visit Tom, you know, he introduces her to Peter. But he's a pretty minor character and doesn't really play an important role. Whereas in the movie, Tom meets Peter because Peter is friends with Marge. So she sees him when they're at the opera. And then from there, you know, he sees him a number of times. And right from the start, when Tom and Peter first meet, there is that attraction and that spark between them. And then as time goes on, even as Marge doesn't trust Tom, Peter does trust Tom. And it kind of seems like his crush on Tom is kind of blinding him to seeing that things are off. And it causes him to not believe Marge. And he just believes Tom is innocent and has nothing to do with, you know, anything with Dickie, you know. And then after Marge and Mr. Greenleaf leave and the case is closed, Tom and Peter spend even more time together and they go on this yacht and they have this really sweet moment where they're just enjoying the moment. And Tom is like, you know, ask me what I would change about right now. And Peter asks him and Tom is like, nothing. And yeah, it's just, it was really sweet to see them together. And even though Tom is so manipulative, obviously, and he's a killer, like I said, there was part of you that sympathized for him. And there was a part of me that like, just loved seeing him and Peter together and happy. And you're just like, oh, just let them have they're happily ever after, right? <laughs> but of course that doesn't happen because Tom says he wants to watch the sunset. And so Peter is like, okay, I'll, I'll be in the cabin. And while Tom is still out there, Meredith calls out to him and Meredith thinks he is Dickie, remember? And so she calls out to him being like, oh, hey, Dickie. Which real quick, in the book, Dickie's disappearance was a huge deal. Like everybody was looking for him. All of the newspapers were writing about it. And so if Meredith had been in the book, she would have been like, whoa, Dickie, like the whole world is looking for you. Where have you been? You know, so it just wouldn't have worked. But in the movie, Dickie's disappearance wasn't as big of a deal. And so Meredith doesn't find it odd to now suddenly see Dickie on this ship, you know? Anyway, so she sees him and he's like, oh, like, are you here alone? And he sees that she's with this big group of family and the family sees the two of them together and she waves to them. Uh, and so she says something about how, you know, how she's been thinking about him so much and she clearly is just very, very into him. And so he ends up kissing her and being like, oh, like, I want to see you again tomorrow. And then from there, he goes inside the cabin where Peter is. And he's like, oh, I want to spend the rest of this trip just in this cabin with you. But Peter is like, hey, I went outside to get you and I saw you kissing Meredith. And he is, of course, very hurt by this. And Tom kind of has this vulnerable moment with Peter where he opens up to him like in a vague way. And he, you know, says the line about how he thought it would be better to be a fake somebody than a real nobody. And he also accidentally refers to himself as Dickie. Uh, and so in this moment, Peter is just kind of like, what are you talking about? And so Tom is like, you know, why don't you tell me things that you like about Tom Ripley? And so as Peter is saying the things he likes about Tom, you know, we see Tom come and lay down beside Peter. And then we fade out and we just see Tom entering his own cabin alone, looking very sad. And the audio from the scene with him and Peter is still playing where we hear Peter listing off the things he likes about Tom. And ultimately we hear that he ends up killing Peter. And so Peter and Meredith, you know, Peter knows Tom is Tom. Meredith knows Tom is Dickie. And so the two of them, he can't be on this ship with these two people who know him as two different people. And so one of them had to die. And honestly, I think he would have killed Meredith had she been alone, but she was with people and they saw the two of them together. So he couldn't kill Meredith. And since Tom had seen him kissing Meredith, he had to do something. And so he ended up having to kill Peter, but it was just so tragic because he was genuinely happy with Peter which, I mean, Tom is also just a very messed up person, right? So, I mean, it's, it's not like he and Peter would have had a great relationship because chances are there would have been some toxic things going on between them because Tom is like a messed up toxic person. But anyway, the seeing the two of them just genuinely happy together was just so sweet. And so the fact that he has to kill Peter in the end is just like so tragic and heartbreaking. And oh man, like it was such an intense, sad ending. And like I said, this character Peter in the book was a very minor character. And the book ends with him inheriting Dickie's money and just like going off to live his life in Europe, you know? And so it definitely was not <laughs> the sad ending that it is in the movie. And before wrapping this up, I just wanted to go over some other changes between book and movie. So for example, in the book, Dickie is a painter, not a very good one, but he is a painter. Whereas in the movie, he plays saxophone and is into jazz music and Tom like lies, acting like he is also into jazz. Which by the way, before killing Dickie, Dickie asks him like, 
do you even like jazz? And you didn't go to Princeton, did you? And so Tom admits like, no, I don't like jazz, or I didn't, but I do now. Uh, and he admits that he hadn't gone to Princeton. So Dickie calls him out on both of those things shortly before his death. But also in the scene where Dickie finds Tom wearing his clothing, which by the way, in both, he told Tom that he could borrow his clothing. But then he walks in on Tom like dressed in his outfit and he gets upset in both book and movie. And in the movie, Tom had been like dancing and singing when Tom, when Dickie walks in on him. Whereas in the book, he had been dressed up as Dickie and he was pretending to be Dickie talking to Marge and he pretends to be Dickie like killing Marge, like he's strangling a fake person. And that is when Dickie walks in on him. Because like I said, in the book, Marge was very cold towards Tom. And so Tom just saw her as like an interference between him and Dickie. And so that's why he's imagining killing her. But there's also a scene in the movie where Tom, Dickie, Marge, and Freddie are like out on Tom, on Dickie's boat, just having a good time. And Dickie and Marge end up going, you know, below deck and they're having sex. And Tom sees them, and he's kind of watching them. And Freddie catches him watching them and he like calls him out on it. And that was not in the book. We also have the scene where Tom and Dickie are playing chess while Dickie is taking a bath. And it's this very, you know, tense moment <laughs> between the two of them. Again, one of those moments where Dickie is clearly, like he sees Tom is into him and he clearly likes that Tom is into him and he's kind of, you know, stringing him along but that was also not in the book and then also speaking of tubs the scene where tom is in the tub and is in the bath when marge finds his rings and is like i need to talk to you so it's this awkward scene where tom is getting out of the tub and he drops his towel and it's just very awkward and then from there he puts on a bathrobe and this is when he tells her like you know like i loved you marge like write it on a piece of paper put it in your purse and save it for a rainy day <laughs> and like i said that's a line i used to quote after seeing this movie for the first time and that line is not in the book so because it's a line i quoted i was kind of sad that it wasn't in the book but on to book versus movie. So I did want to say this movie has some really cool shots, like some really cool uh, cinematography and camera angles. And there's one moment in particular when Tom, he's pretending to be Dickie, but he's going back to being Tom and he's shutting the piano lid and his reflection in the piano splits into two people. So that was just a very cool scene. And then the chemistry between like all of the different actors was just so perfect. And as said, it was just so suspenseful as well. While also having a lot of moments that are just kind of like uncomfortable because Tom is just being so obvious in some ways, right? And he's just so uptight that it makes you like uncomfortable and awkward. But then at the same time, like you hate Dickie and Freddie for being so judgmental of Tom. You know, there's a part where Tom is trying to remind Dickie like, oh, your train is at eight, but he and Freddie are busy just listening to jazz and they both look at him like, Tom, like Dickie seems like embarrassed about Tom, about being friends with him. And Freddie is just being like, okay, what a loser. And so you're just so annoyed with these rich people who are so judgmental of Tom. Yet at the same time, Tom is just being so awkward and uptight that you're just like, oh my gosh, like, you know, calm down and just so some awkward moments, but it's meant to be awkward. But yeah, Tom is just such a great character in book and movie. But we also see in the movie that before he goes to Europe, he had been a bathroom attendant, which I thought was a great touch. In the book, it seems like he just has a variety of odd jobs he does to make money, plus his money from his aunt. And so just seeing him as a bathroom attendant and a piano player in the movie just like really adds to his character. But yeah, as I'm sure you can tell, I think the movie wins here. I did give the book three stars, so it's not like I disliked the book, but the movie is just such an improvement and I absolutely loved it. It was so, so good. It had a lot of the things that I thought the book was lacking. There are actually more Ripley books. I believe there's like four in total. And then there are two more Ripley movies based on some of those books. However, a different actor plays Tom Ripley in all of the movies. And so I, for Patreon, I was going to read the following books. <laughs> But honestly, I just didn't like this book enough to want to read the rest of the books in the series. So instead for Patreon, I'm gonna watch the following two Ripley movies instead and I will review them for Patreon. So for $3 a month, you can sign up and become a Patreon and receive exclusive content and also take part in book versus movie polls that I post just for my Patreons. And it just helps support the channel and it means so, so much to me for those who are willing to donate money to why the book wins, you know? But even if you don't want to donate money or you can't donate money, it still means so much for me to have you subscribe to my channel, to like this video, to comment your thoughts down below. I love interacting with people. And then if you wanna give my podcast a rating and review, that would also mean a lot to me. So yeah, let me know what you think of this book and movie down in the comments. Let me know what you think of Matt Damon's performance and Jude Law and Gwyneth Paltrow. Like this is just such an amazing cast, right? And Kate Blanchett, she was nominated for a 
BAFTA, I believe, uh, for this movie. So the BAFTAs just love Kate Blanchett, which you can't really blame them, right? Because she's amazing. Uh, so yeah, and then again, if you want more Jude Law content, you can check out my video for Cold Mountain. And this director also did The English Patient, which is also based on a book, which was also like an Academy Award winning movie. And that is one I would like to cover at some point. So if you would love me to cover The English Patient, comment down below letting me know and I will do it sooner rather than later. So yeah, that wraps it up for the talented Mr. Ripley. Thank you so much for watching or listening and I will see you next time. Bye.